Hello, it's Dini. So I'm a pretty new booktuber, but I've been watching booktube now for a little over a year. And since I've been watching booktube, there have been several books that I have read because of it. So I'm going to talk about the books that booktube convinced me to read. And when I say convinced, I mean when I had originally kind of heard of these books, I wasn't too sure about reading them. Some of the concepts sounded interesting, but it wasn't until I heard either a specific booktuber that I really liked talk about it and raved about it, or because I just kept seeing booktube in general talk about it, whether it's for good or bad, really. So I'll start off with probably the most notable book that I've seen one specific booktuber really rave about, and then it spread like wildfire, so other people started reading it and then also raving about it. And that is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. And this book was like super, super, super hyped by Kat from Paperback Dreams. And I will say this is a pretty worthwhile read, even if you are older. So the story is about two young teenagers who are kind of coming into their identities, going into university, and trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives and really having some big dreams, but then sometimes getting pushback from either society or from parents and really just kind of claiming your identity and your dreams as well. So I think this is definitely a recommended read for a younger crowd who are in that like going to university or like they're at the end of the high school era and they don't quite know what they want to do with their life. I think this book will definitely kind of speak to that crowd. But even if you are older like I am, this is kind of almost a nostalgic feel for like those high school days when you were more confused or those early university days where you might have bigger dreams and you kind of want more encouragement to go after them. So I'm definitely glad that Kat really vouched for this book and I'm glad that I read it. Next is an author that I've read because of booktube who has been like really pushed and that is V.E. Schwab. So I've read four of her books so far and that is This Savage Song, Our Dark Duet, Vicious and Vengeful. So far of the books I've read of hers, I've really enjoyed them. I really like that Schwab has some pretty out there ideas, or at least unique, at least to me, and they could almost be like commentary on society. So there are some criticisms that I have of her books, but overall I've still enjoyed reading them. I think if you are a reader who likes more unique ideas, or books that are kind of set in the real world but almost have magic, not necessarily magic, but a fantastical element to them, you'll probably like her. So for V.E. Schwab, since I have liked her works, I'll go ahead and probably read the Darker Shade of Magic series. So overall, glad that booktube has recommended her. Next is a book that I did not enjoy and I have lots of problems with, but I've seen booktube say how great it is and how it's a great commentary on society, and that is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. I could probably go on a rant on why I don't like this. I don't think it's good commentary. I think it wasn't too well written. The plot was weird. The characters had had no consequences to their actions. And overall did not like this book. Other people loved it. Read it for yourself because obviously I did and I was like, this is bad. So I don't know what else to say about Female of the Species mainly because it makes me mad. And every time I think about it, I just think of how bad it is and my opinion of it gets worse. So that wasn't a good read, but I'm still glad that I read it because it made me like some other books that I read because of booktube better, like Sadie by Courtney Summers. That one is an excellent book. It has like podcast element, so that I would recommend. Female of the Species, wouldn't really recommend. <laughs> but if you're for some reason interested in a social commentary about rape culture in our society and want one perspective of it, then go ahead and read it. Obviously, people have different preferences. But let's move on to a book that I actually really enjoyed, and that is Circe by Madeline Miller. This book follows the life of Circe, who is a Greek sorceress. It also brings in some other stories like the Odyssey, and I really enjoyed it because it was kind of like this huge snapshot of the life of Circe in Greek mythology. And the way I found out about Circe was from Rhiannon from Crescent Moon Reads. And they really raved about not only the quality of the writing, but the quality of story about Circe's life. So if you're interested in Greek mythology, then I would definitely recommend this read as well. And I very much enjoyed it. So going from Greek mythology to kind of Viking history, the next book I read because of booktube is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. So this story is about two rival clans who 
I think it was like every so many years they fought in a battle because the gods told them to. And then it's about the two rival clans coming together to fight against a worse enemy. And if I sound hesitant about describing this book, it's because I was like, there's it, it, not much happened in it, at least for me. So I was kind of bored most of the time and I didn't particularly like any of the characters. Like I just wasn't interested in it, but I read it all on audiobook. And that's probably the only reason why I made it through it. So that's all I can really say about that book, because I probably wouldn't recommend it to others. But a series that I would recommend is Saga by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. This is an epic graphic novel series that is set in space. There is kind of Romeo-Juliet love. There's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of looking into really difficult subjects and discussions. And overall, it is so fun to read. Sometimes it can be very graphic, so if you don't like stuff that is like super graphic in really any sort of way, then it might be kind of hard to literally look at it. But if you're okay with that kind of thing, then I would highly recommend it because the story is so interesting. The characters are just wonderful. Even ones that are kind of evil, you're just like, I really like this guy. So yeah, this graphic novel series, I think it has great character work, a really interesting plot, an interesting setting. I think that the artwork itself is really beautiful. So overall, I don't really have many complaints about it and would definitely recommend. And then another series that I read because of booktube that is kind of like a sci-fi thing, although I don't consider it sci-fi, but others do, is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. So this series does retellings in a sci-fi setting of different classics like Cinderella, Snow White, Little Red Riding Hood, and Rapunzel. And as a concept, I was like, that, you know, I think I would enjoy that. And I sort of-ish did enjoy it, but then I also had a ton of problems with the inconsistency of the plot and how unrealistic things were. Like, obviously we're gonna suspend our disbelief when it's a fantasy or sci sci-fi setting, but this was like, just, I could not believe it because decisions were so dumb that people made. I was like, I, I enjoy parts, but then most of the time I'm just like, irritated at the book. And I know so many people love this series. So if you like classic retellings and space, sort of space, but not really, then maybe you'll enjoy it. Yeah, but I was just eh about it. Another book I was just kind of eh about was The Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyung. And I did a critique of this book. I was in the camp of like, it was overall fine. Didn't hate it, didn't love it. I know it gets a ton of hate on booktube, but I also have seen reviews of people who really enjoy the characters and really connected to them. So I think this is a book that people just kind of have to read for themselves to figure out whether or not they love it or hate it. So yeah, that, that's my camp. And now we're down to the last two books that I read because of booktube, and luckily these are both good ones. So first we have Neverworld Wake by Marisha Pessel. And I first saw this from Books and Lala, and I normally don't like thrillers, and this is kind of a thriller thing. I'm not, I'm not well read in the genre, so I can't really speak to it. But the concept is really cool. It's about a group of friends who are pretty much in a limbo area between life and death, and they have to vote on the one person who gets to survive. And they repeat what's called a wake, so it's kind of like a day. They just repeat the day over and over again, and every day they have to vote, and until they get a consensus on the one person who lives, they just keep on having to repeat their day. So concept gets an A from me. I really liked the concept. And this book is filled with the most unlikable characters. Like, you will hate every single character because they're horrible people, but it's so fascinating to watch them having to deal with the situation that they're in and how each of them deals with it differently. So if you are really well read in thriller or whatever this category is, because again, don't really know, you'll probably like this because I normally read fantasy, but I really liked this concept and I really enjoyed the writing and the characters. So would recommend. And last but not least, I have Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I would classify this as like a quiet fantasy duology. Oftentimes when we think of fantasy, we think of like really epic stakes, lots of action, but this book mainly deals with like the interactions between people and has like fantasy more as an undertone. The story has 
incredibly beautiful writing and I think it characters are very well-rounded and interesting to follow. I know some people think it's way too slow. I think it's because it's a quiet fantasy story, which is really why I classify it. So you kind of have to be in the mood for something that has fantasy, but then deals with almost contemporary issues of like interactions between people. And there are some high stakes in the story, so it's not like it's too quiet. But overall, it is a far slower story than I think people would expect. So personally, I really loved this duology and would recommend it if you like fantasy, but on the quieter side. So that's it for my list and thank you for watching.